Report suspicious activity to your local police or sheriff. If you need help, ask a Walmart manager for assistance. Hey guys, it's KJ from the Scariest Movie Ever channel on YouTube. And I wanted to make this video that has to do with Jade Helm and all the kind of madness surrounding that. I've had a lot of people asking me about Jade Helm. If you want to see more on the symbolism surrounding Jade Helm, just do a search out there and you'll see numerous different interpretations, which makes sense to me because if you're familiar with my work and my channel, you know a lot of the time we'll cover more of the symbolic language out there in the world and the media. And it's like I often say that symbols can have multiple meanings and each meaning can still be relevant. But I want to go beyond the symbolism of Jade Helm, which of course there's plenty, and look at the bigger implications of this. A lot of people are afraid that this summer it's over, that this is it. You know, it's a full-on takeover of America and it's over. I typically won't do something like that, like say, hey guys, in, in a month it's over, two months, you know, we're finished, the collapse is here. It's hard to say. I've been in this game long enough to see so many people come and go that say, it's happening now, or, you know, it's this November, or it's in January, and the day comes and goes, and nothing happens. But there is something a little bit different about Jade Helm. This is the biggest operation like this that's ever taken place on American soil. We're basically being occupied by our own military so they can run different drills and whatnot. At least this is the official story. But that alone should give us cause for concern. Because what happens when the American military occupies a territory? Why do they do that? Even if they tell us it's just for training, what's the real purpose? Which brings me to this video. Uh, this is a channel called Smokin' Joe Trainer. I've been subbed to for a really long time. And the reason I like this channel, and the reason I will listen to what Smokin' Joe has to say, is because he's a military veteran just like myself. And we did very different things while we were in. I was active duty for eight years. Uh, for most of those years, I was a military medic. Now, while Smoke and Joe was in the service, he actually worked in psychological operations. So he has a whole different perspective to a lot of the things happening right now in this world than, than I do, or many of you do. Now, so he did a video called Psychological Preparation of the Battlefield in AARP. Some of you may have seen this, some of you may not have seen this yet, but please go check it out. Look up the AARP, just type in AARP Martial Law and you'll see the commercial. And it's really creepy because it's produced just like a, a regular commercial for AARP, which is an organization for elderly people. So in the video, it plays out just like a, you know, a day in the life of, right? It's like the mother, the child, the grandmother's in the other room. No, it's really, it's what's taking place in the background of this commercial that really matters. The commercial is promoting the Ad Council's Caregiver Assistance Program, and it includes the background audio of a TV news anchor announcing, riots nationwide have prompted local governments to declare martial law. The president is asking that citizens find safety and remain calm. Authorities are working to contain the outbreak. Now, it's interesting, if you follow up on this, numerous people have contacted the Ad Council on Twitter asking for an explanation. Of course, they put the blame elsewhere and said it was some agency that put the commercial together. And this is what they said. They said, we appreciate those of you who have taken the time to voice your concerns about our caregivers assistance PSA and concerns about the background audio file. Our pro bono ad agency who created this video used a pre-existing fictional vintage audio file as ambient background noise to invoke an earlier era, which sounds weird, right? And it was not intended to provide any additional messaging or for any additional purpose. And that's the official story. So this kind of takes me back to Smoke and Joe. Uh, the reason I like to hear his perspective on this is, like I said, he worked in psychological operations. And the reason he put up a video about this ad is because he saw something there that he'd actually done in the past in his service. He basically explains that any time that a country is about to be occupied, specifically by the American government, the psychological operations team gets together and starts doing their magic. So they start dropping in a lot of propaganda, you know, hidden messages, things like this. This is literally out of their textbooks. So when Smoke and Joe Trainer, a guy who actually used to do this for a living, saw this playing out in American television, 
that was a real aha moment, I believe, for him. And really for the rest of us, I mean, most of us who haven't had experience doing psychological operations, we can even pick up that, man, there's just something off about this, right? There's something off. So isn't it interesting that at the time we get this commercial hinting at martial law, saying because of the riots, the president wants you to stay indoors. Right at the same time, we get Baltimore blowing up, right? We get all these riots. So keeping in mind the monster that the government created in federalizing the TSA, what do you think is going to happen when they federalize our police forces in America? And guys, this is where they're heading. This is what they're trying to do. This is order out of chaos. Remember, this is Baltimore Mayor Stephanie Rawlings. This is the same lady that wanted to give the rioters, quote, space to destroy the property. Baltimore Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake gave the rioters space to destroy property and reportedly told the police to stand down. She was a key player in the Justice Department's plan to expand federal control over local law enforcement. Rawlings Blake is one of three mayors who provided broad input into President Obama's task force on 21st century policing, which advocates the federalization of police departments across the country by forcing them to adhere to stricter federal requirements when they receive their funding. So sometimes to be able to predict what's going to happen in the future, it's good to look back in the past, right? So if we look back just a few years here, some of you may remember this, but this is when, at the time, the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano was stepping down. She was warning of a serious cyber attack and unprecedented natural disasters and more. The outgoing Homeland Security Secretary has a warning for her successor. A massive and serious cyber attack on the U.S. homeland is coming and a natural disaster, the likes of which the nation has never seen, is also likely on its way. Some of you may remember the so-called underwear bombing back in 2009. Uh, if you're not familiar with that one, check it out. Definitely a shady situation, to say the very least. What's really interesting is that Napolitano was the secretary of DHS at the time, and they ultimately used this false flag, this underwear bombing attempt in 2009. This is how they federalized airport security. So once again, we find them using these shady false flag attacks, if you will, to usher in more government control. After the failed Christmas Day underwear bombing attempt in 2009, Napolitano launched a worldwide and, quote, historic effort in 190 countries to enhance passenger screening and counter the threat of so-called non-metallic devices on aircraft. What's really important to understand here is to see what happens whenever the government steps in and federalizes an agency. I'll leave a link to this underneath the video. It's a master list of TSA crimes and abuses. And it's absolutely staggering. In this list, you'll find accounts including various kinds of TSA abuse from physical to sexual to financial to psychological, inappropriate questions about personal finances, passengers' money being confiscated, harassment that forces people to miss their flights, bullying of various kinds, children being molested, groping, assault, and the list goes on. All you have to do is just a little bit of a search on TSA abuses, and the lists go on and on and on. The TSA is by far one of the most corrupt organizations out there. It's just so obvious, right, to many of us. So once again, we're living in a time where when we hear that the government is going to federalize something, we should be very, very concerned. So now are you beginning to see the bigger picture? I'm telling you right now that the New World Order, or we can call them the powers that be, the elite, the Illuminati, the shadow government, these people at the top of the pyramid are pushing all in right now on America. And it's crazy, isn't it? Because we're living at a time where every week there's like a new bomb going off or a shooting taking place, right? It's just nonstop chaos. And this is what the Illuminati does. It's called order out of chaos. And it's happening so frequently right now, it's tough to keep up with. 
And speaking of that, I want to show you just a couple of examples of some of these questionable situations that have been taking place uh, over the last few years when it comes to bombings and shootings and attacks. Check this out. In Oslo, Norway, only hours before Freemason Anders Bering Brevik began shooting children, the police emergency squad out there had concluded an exercise where they practiced an almost identical situation. On the same day as the Aurora Massacre, Rocky Vista University College of Osteopathic Medicine was holding an identical drill that actually simulated a shooter inside of a movie theater. There's actually a long history of Sandy Hook, Connecticut, specifically a lot of the schools in that area being connected to Department of Homeland Security money. So it's interesting that a mock school shooting drill was actually being conducted in Putnam County, which is only miles away from Sandy Hook Elementary. And this took place on the very same day of the Sandy Hook events, December 14th. On the morning of the Oklahoma City bombing, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms just happened to be staging a, quote, anti-terrorist drill with their bomb squad at the exact same time. So we also have the London subway bombing or the London 7-7 bombing. It turns out here that government agents, uh, specifically from Scotland Yard, were running simultaneous exercises of, quote, bombs going off precisely at the railway stations where the actual bombing took place that morning. During 9-11, national military exercises that were simulating terrorist hijackings of U.S. aircraft were actually being conducted at the very same time that those hijackings were occurring in real life. So are you starting to see the bigger picture now? You're starting to see how all of this connects? So those were just a few examples, but you can basically do the same thing with every other attack shooting, bombing that's taking place out there nowadays. It seems like every single one of them, we can find this connection with the government running some kind of a drill or the police running some kind of a drill right around the same time. Oftentimes a drill that mimics the exact same action. So are these just coincidences? I don't think so. Which brings me to more the symbolic language of all this stuff. I mean, America has been being prepared for an attack on our soil, for an occupation on our soil, for destruction for quite a while. And this is what they use these so-called Illuminati tools for, is to propagate the propaganda, to push forward these ideas. It's predictive programming, social engineering. It's very much the same thing that Smoke and Joe Trainer and his buddies had to do in other countries before they came in. It's release the psychological operations, prepare the propaganda, right? So here we have Beyonce from several years ago doing a Super Bowl halftime show escorted by the New World Order police force. So isn't it interesting that once again at the time of all of this upheaval and all this madness taking place in America, we have more of this predictive programming. And this right here is from the iHeartRadio awards show that happened just recently. And this is Nick Jonas on stage performing in chains, obviously as a prisoner, right? And then speaking of symbols and patterns and whatnot, I wanted to share this with you. And this is a little bit different here. Now, this is from the television series Lost. Now, while I was doing the research for this video, at the same time, I was doing some research on all the people that used to be on Lost. And it had nothing to do with my research for this video. It was really just because I'm a geek and I really liked the TV show Lost. <laughs> and I wanted to see what the actors and actresses were up to. And in the process of doing this, I actually found something that connected to this research and to this video. So I started researching a little bit on Josh Holloway. He played a character named Sawyer on Lost. And one of the very first things I found was him right here, once again, doing his Illuminati all-seeing eye symbol. Now, if you're not familiar with this stuff, just do a little research on there, and you're going to see that this is very typical of many actors and actresses and performers and musicians, oftentimes they'll do the one eye symbol. Now, I've covered that extensively, and as I've said about symbols, it means a lot of different things, but ultimately it's all about that beast system, the New World Order, the coming Antichrist beast system. So, of course, it's a bummer seeing this actor that I really liked on this show doing this stuff, but it is what it is. Now, this wasn't exactly what I found that I thought was so interesting. This is just what led me further down the path. Here's what I found. 
So it turns out that Josh Holloway reunited with one of the creators of Lost to star in a new show that's coming out very soon called Colony. But what's Colony all about, right? Colony is a naturalistic drama about a family forced to make difficult choices as they balance staying together with surviving an existential threat to the human race. Set in the near future, the story takes place in L.A., which exists in a state of occupation by a force of outside intruders. Now check this out. Some collaborate with the authorities and benefit from the new order, while others rebel and suffer the consequences. And it all reminded me of this as well. This is just a little bit from a video from a band called Arcade Fire, and the song is called The Suburbs. It's really interesting what was taking place here. Because in this video, it shows this. It's an occupied America. You can see the kids right down there standing on the other side of the fence just looking over, right? As the helicopters are going over and you got the explosions. So once again, is this more of that predictive programming? Is this something else that's kind of preparing us for what's to come? For a, truly for an American occupation on American soil. Now, if you would have said that to somebody back when this video came out, they would have told you you were crazy. This came out about four years ago, five years ago. But now, looking at the new face of America, right, as it stands and all the madness taking place, this really isn't that much of a stretch. So as for Jade Helm and all the other madness that's sweeping the nation right now, there's one thing I've learned over the last few weeks, just kind of watching the coverage, specifically here online from citizen journalists, you know, people like you. One thing I've learned is that you guys are amazing and that all of this really matters. And I'm loving that people, regular people out there on the streets, regular people out there in the streets are using their cameras to document this stuff. They're videotaping this stuff. They're doing their own research. They're asking a lot of the right questions. Can we change this? Can we stop this? I mean, a lot of the stuff is prophetic. You know, a lot of the stuff is going to happen. But I guess it depends on measures, right? Like how hardcore will it be, right? How quick will it be? I think that's where we come in, you know, all of us, not just me, but you, citizen journalists, people watching this stuff and reporting on it. Because we know that the mainstream media is completely compromised. We are the real alternative media. I don't exactly see Jade Helm and all this as being it, like it's over, you know, this summer it's done. But how I do see it is this is them getting their foothold. This is them finding their place here in America, getting positioned. That's what they need to do, right? And of course, they're going to tell us it's training and all this, but you know, how long will it take to get these guys out of there, right? And again, this is something that we can speculate on all day, but we really just have to watch. We've got to keep watching this. So all you people out there in all those states with all this stuff happening, keep recording this stuff. Keep asking the right questions, putting it out there. You know, we've got to keep an eye on this just to see what's really going on. Don't give up hope. You know, remember that there are millions of us and only thousands of them, right? The problem with the millions of us is we can't come together. And the powers that be are behind that. This is why we're seeing so much division right now in our country. While all this stuff is taking place with the military and riots and this and that, we're getting news stories about, you know, gay bakeries getting shut down because they won't make a gay cake and stuff, right? Or we're getting stories on, you know, Muslims hating Jews and Jews hating Muslims and gay versus straight and straight versus gay. Of course, all the riots taking place, you know, we got the black against white against the white against the black. It's divisive, and this is what they need. They have to do this. The system, this beast system has got to keep us all divided, right? Because it knows that if we could all come together, we could make some real changes. Either way, folks, that's what I've got for you for now. Just seriously, keep your eyes open on all this stuff. Don't get overwhelmed. Take breaks if you have to, okay? Because there's so much coming in, like every other day it feels like, right? Stay strong. Stay at peace. Don't let this stuff overwhelm you. I believe these are spiritual times. A lot of things are coming upon us. A lot of things are being revealed. So stay in the spirit. Stay strong. Stay connected. And let's keep watching this thing as it unfolds and keeping each other informed. Anyway, guys, thanks for checking out the video. And take care out there, all right? I'll talk to you real soon.